It's always nice to see something secret like this, hidden away in a game extremely few people would have ever played. Also He-Man reference. Every once in a while, you learn about a game which never got the attention it deserved and went largely unknown for the longest time. So here's an ancient DOS game that's surprisingly fun despite its flaws, its age, and its extreme obscurity. Chopper Commando. I had no idea this game ever existed until just a couple weeks ago, and after trying it out, I'm rather impressed with it. Not just because it's fun, but because it's extremely simple and is able to be fun without all the features and graphics you'd expect from other games of the time. Now, it's not flawless by any means. In fact, it can be a bit glitchy and the hit detection isn't great. And that's despite being fixed up a bit compared to the last official release by the game's original author. The controls also take quite a bit of getting used to, which is par for the course really for any game involving helicopters. Speaking of which, I really need to get to LHX one of these days. Chopper Commando was originally created by Mark Curie and released in 1990, although the version I'm playing, and the version generally available, was updated by Harvey Patterson in 2014 to fix a few minor things and add background palette changing for Day vs. Night missions. It's a one-player action game, which only uses CGA 320 by 200 four-color graphics and PC speaker sound. As for its current release date, the game's technically always been freeware, although for a time, Mark Curie was selling the source code. Nowadays, both the source and game itself are freeware, and can be obtained from the RGB Classic Games website at www.classicdosgames.com. It's always nice to have short and simple game stats every once in a while. Now, the gameplay has some familiarity to other war-themed games of the time, in that not only do you create a roster of pilots, but pilots can be permanently killed or end up missing in action. So try not to get too attached to any one particular pilot you create. The ultimate goal is to just survive as many missions as you can, get as high of an average score as you can, and increase in rank as far as you can. And each time you select a pilot from the roster, you choose both game difficulty and mission difficulty. So the difficulty selections you make are only for the mission that you're about to fly. They're not permanent choices that stick with your pilot for the remainder of its existence. And the game difficulty mostly just affects how many bombs you get per armament, while mission difficulty determines which pool of missions one will randomly be selected from. And there's a fairly sizable number of different types of missions in the game, though I kind of don't like having to select the mission difficulty every time, and would have liked to have had either ranked difficulty, which would get progressively more difficult the higher ranked you are, or the ability to just have either the game, you know, just throw random missions at you from any of the ones that it has, because each one of its difficulty levels only really has like three or four missions to it. And once you've been briefed, the game begins. The game map is actually split into about a dozen screens. At the far left and right are friendly bases where you can land to rearm and repair, or end the mission once it's complete, while the middle screens of the map are where all the enemies are. Another thing which would have been neat would have been procedural map generation, but the game works well enough with a fixed map layout. Most missions come down to just destroying specific things on the map, but some of the missions aren't quite so straightforward. There's one where you have to recover something on foot, meaning you have to actually exit your helicopter, and there's even a couple where you have to defend your base from attacks coming from both sides. Now, if you want to abort a mission without your pilot going MIA, you have to land at a base. Hitting the escape key just quits the DOS, and when you start the game back up, the pilot will be missing and won't be selectable anymore. 
Now, controlling your chopper can be a bit tricky at first, though you have options for both keyboard and mouse controls. The mouse controls are a lot more subtle and allow for much more dynamic movement, but they're very touchy, so you need to be extremely careful with how much you move the mouse. You can fire bombs forwards, kind of like a machine gun, or can drop bombs straight down. You also have a small number of mega bombs and missiles at your disposal. The mega bombs have a much larger blast radius, while missiles can lock on to flying aircraft and have a very slight amount of tracking. Or at least that's the way it feels like they work, because quite frankly, the missiles are very hard to make effective use of. Another thing with the controls too is that the mouse controls are fine for the chopper, but when you have to get out on foot, the mouse controls suddenly become terrible. You can toggle between mouse and keyboard controls easily enough, but having to do this every time you switch from chopper to foot to chopper again, it kind of gets a little ridiculous. One thing that's not quite as ridiculous is your landing gear. And if the landing gear is down, it creates drag, causing you to move slightly slower and also prevents your ejector system from working should you need to abandon the chopper. Having the gear up is optimal, except you can't land when the gear is up. You can actually pull the landing gear up while still landed, which, <laughs> yeah, typically not a smart idea. One thing that's really smart about this thing, though, is that several missions can actually have multiple outcomes. For instance, there's one mission where you have to destroy an enemy aircraft within one minute of real time, presuming the game's playing at the correct speed. Possible outcomes include failing to destroy the plane yet surviving, thus abandoning the mission, failing to destroy the plane and getting killed, destroying the plane and under the time limit and returning home, destroying the plane but getting killed in the process, or destroying the plane and returning home but exceeding the time limit in the process. One other potential outcome to every mission is if you return to base but the base is destroyed. When this happens, the game checks to see if the shot which destroyed the base was your own or carried out by the enemy. If the enemy did it, you're off the hook and could continue playing as a new base will be built. If you were the one who destroyed the base though, you're sent to the electric chair. Now, given that this is a multi-screen game where you can make holes in the landscape with your weaponry, one thing I find very impressive is that the game is able to track damage across every single screen. To put it simply, there's not enough conventional memory on a computer to even attempt to do this with as many screens as there are. So instead, the game remembers the impact point of every explosion, as well as the size of the explosions, and clears those patches away each time it redraws a screen that you've previously been on. This is an incredibly clever way of maintaining the state of the game's landscapes, and helps add to the overall presentation of this thing. Mind you, there are some rather nasty bugs. For one thing, when using mouse controls, you'll sometimes start a new pilot, and suddenly end up exploding. I'm not sure exactly why this happens, but I've noticed if you use the arrow keys to select other pilots after creating a new one, then choose the pilot you created, this doesn't happen. So I'm guessing it's a problem with how keyboard keys are being tracked. Another potential problem comes with crashing while moving really fast. What ends up happening is the crash happens on screen, but your person inside the vehicle ejects off screen, so the explosion doesn't hurt him, but now you're stuck in limbo, unable to really do much of anything. Now another neat thing that happens is every so often you'll go on a night mission. However, all this seems to do is just use the alternate CGA palette. Though another neat thing is that your pilots can be promoted in multiple ways, either by completing a large number of missions, by getting an obscene number of points, or by having a balanced mix of both successful missions and points. This means if you're finishing your missions but not scoring well, you will eventually get a promotion. It also means you can rise the ranks lightning fast by completing nothing but the harder mission types which tend to score better. The last thing to mention is that when your chopper crashes, so long as you're still alive, a reserve chopper is sent out to rescue you, at which point you'll take command of it. If you need to land at the western base which has its strange looking cave thing, but your chopper's too damaged to get in there easily, what you might want to do is eject somewhere safe, let a reserve chopper pick you up, which will actually fly properly, then take that back to the landing pad without having to wrestle to the controls. Chopper Commando is very basic, but very fun. It gets repetitive pretty quickly, but for the hour or two you do play it for, you'll have a blast, and I really wish I had this game when I was younger, as I probably would've just played the heck out of it. And given its free nature, I'd recommend everyone into old DOS action games, or just old CGA games in general, to give this one a try. Just remember one little detail when you go to set it up. 
This game runs way too freaking fast with the auto or max cycle setting, so you need to set a fixed cycles count of about a thousand under DOSBox. You can tweak that to make the game faster or slower as desired, but a thousand feels close to what it's probably supposed to be. You can actually adjust the game's speed internally, but it's better to just use DOSBox's cycles count instead. Anywho, that's all for episode 170 of Ancient DOS Games. Aim for a short one this week because after having so little time last week to capture footage, I had no idea how this week was going to turn out. Next week, however, is a filler, and there's something which came out recently which I think everyone's going to want me to comment on. So I shall. Now even if you have no clue what I'm talking about, stay tuned for next Saturday as we check out something somewhat more modern than the stuff I usually look at. Technically speaking.